Es ist ein äh, Adrenalinkick letztendlich. Ne? Also It's es an adrenaline ich, rush. It makes me feel free. Ich, äh, My thoughts habe, are completely free and I can tune out everything around me. Es gibt das Leben, dann gibt's Judo. There's Aber life and then there's Judo. Judo mein Leben. But right now Judo is my life. The Paralympics really made me work on myself. Going there isn't stressful. For me, it's pure fulfillment. This is my life's dream. That image of a medal at the Games motivates you and pushes you tremendously. I can't accept that war is all there is where I was born. And if you don't want that to be the case, then you do something about it. If I'd stayed in Guinea, I wouldn't even have lived to be five years old. It was obvious from the beginning, even as a baby, that with my disability I wouldn't have had a chance. If I'm being honest, I'm having a lot of nightmares right now when I sleep. I just hope that I don't find anything else to add to them. Shujan Nashwan is on his way to training, accompanied by his brother Mo. An eye disease has left Shuja almost completely blind. I've always been very active. I could tell it was something that gave me a chance to develop and allowed me to be more in touch with my body. I used to do Taekwondo, but my vision got worse, and at some point I couldn't see the kicks and punches anymore. I didn't want to be kicked and punched all the time, so I switched to Judo. For me, it's just a dance, one where everyone wants to take the lead and everyone has their own style. That means I don't have any limitations anymore. We grab and fight. I have a good sense of my body, and everything that happens is balanced out by several senses. In that way, you don't have to be able to see. Professionals can also close their eyes. Many people see sport as something purely physical. It's definitely not that for me. There are a whole lot of mental processes too. It's about reaching inner clarity, being in harmony with yourself and your environment. There's also a lot of pressure when you're vying for the Paralympics. You have to maintain your ranking to stay in the national team and then reach the qualification stage for the Games. In some ways, I'm not really the sort of person who's well suited to that. Al Hassan Balde was born in Guinea in 1985, but he grew up with his aunt and uncle in Germany. His uncle says growing up in Germany saved his life. I hadn't thought of adoption at all in the beginning. But when we found out what the underlying condition was, we had to consider it. I knew that Al Hassan wouldn't have had a chance in Guinea. So we were happy to do it. We learned a lot, and he has enriched our lives. Suddenly, we were dad and mom. We did everything you have to do. Sleepless nights, feeding, everything. From the start, life with a paraplegic child was a challenge for Mustafa and Veronica. There were plenty of unexpected twists and turns. <laughs> We once went to a rehabilitation trade fair in Dusseldorf. It was a pleasant surprise, and we learned all sorts of things. To start with, we could get a wheelchair that was tailored for Al Hassan. Until then, we got wheelchairs through our health insurance, and they were almost adult-sized. 
There was this mini racing wheelchair on display at the fair. Al Hassan saw it and sat down. And it was as if it had been built just for him. Al Hassan started riding around in it. And suddenly we'd lost him. He was going all over the place. We couldn't find him. I have to say, it was an exciting four days. Buying a wheelchair tailored for Al Hassan was like the starting gun for a passion that would come to define his life. The mini racing wheelchair was the beginning. Without that, I wouldn't have been able to experience and achieve everything I have. It gave me a lot of mobility, flexibility, freedom and independence. It also gave me the opportunity to express myself through athletic performance. And at the end of the day, it allowed me to become the person that I am. Even as a teenager, Al Hassan was competing internationally. At 18, he traveled to Athens for his first Paralympics. Al Hassan's story is unique. Born a twin in Africa, then successful as a German. When Al Hassan is successful and the German anthem plays and people sing, it just makes you so proud. The family supported Al Hassan's athletic career. His grandmother, in particular, was an important person to him from an early age. She also helped him through difficult times when he felt different from other kids because of his skin color. You sollten doch weiße Farbe kaufen, ne? You wanted us to buy white paint. You wanted to be white, too. Once we did it with some white flour. It was probably because you were the only one with different skin color, and you wanted to be like the others. That's often the case with children. Something else I found really important is that I never felt, quote, disabled here. I've always had the opportunity to be who I am. That's the important thing. I could do everything, just like Ibrahim, Indira and Lucas. After all, my situation was really quite different. <laughs> <laughs> to get some respite from the pressures of competitive sport, Shuja visits his family regularly. That's something his little sister Zadir is especially happy about. Family symbolizes growth for me. It's where my roots are. And there's a lot of responsibility on you when you're the big brother and the eldest son. At times, I didn't think I could live up to that. And I perceived my disability as a shortcoming. Overcoming that meant realizing that I can grow with the rest of my family and give a lot, just like they've given me a lot. That reflection has led to the relationship I have with them today, and I'm really, really proud of that. Shuja came to Germany from Yemen at the age of five. He learned the language, finished high school, and went on to compete for Germany in international judo tournaments. <laughs> Germany may be his home, but Shuja still feels connected to his war-torn country of birth. <laughs> Yemen is a little bit of family, and that's 
Yemen is like family. I feel connected to the people. When you have that sort of connection, you're not cut off from the lives of others. I find it unbearable how difficult life is for people in Yemen. The first step is to give people some hope again. That's why I'd like to meet Ali Khusrov. He's a Yemeni judoka, the only one who's been able to compete in the Olympic Games. Together with him, I want to stage a mini version of the Paralympics. Not in Japan, but in Yemen. Because Yemen needs that message of peace. While Shuja travels to Yemen, Al Hassan continues to work towards his dream, competing in a fourth Paralympics. He trains 12 times a week. 90% of the time I look forward to training. It's something I've grown accustomed to, and I always have the big goal in the forefront of my mind. So I don't mind it. In fact, I enjoy it. Sport has had a big influence on my development. Of course, as a disabled person, I've always looked for possibilities to participate in life and in society. And I've built a lot of self-confidence through sport. It's something that's completely fundamental to my life. I'm all about speed. I like everything that has to do with going fast. And with a racing wheelchair, there's also the fact that you propel it yourself. It's an adrenaline rush. It makes me feel free. My thoughts are completely free and I can tune out everything around me. That's why I enjoy racing wheelchairs so much. The Paralympics is the big goal for every para-athlete. It's like what the Olympics is to non-disabled people. Because of it, I've been able to experience so many things. I've been there and participated myself, and almost won a medal myself. So of course it entices me to pursue that goal, and to get the best possible result. Six and a half thousand kilometers away, Shuja is returning to the country of his birth. The journey takes him via Egypt to the Yemeni coast. From there, he goes by car to the capital, Sana'a. A flight like that brings your body to another place very quickly, but your spirit isn't there yet. So it took me this 17 hour drive to realize that I'm in Yemen. Since 2015, war has raged in Yemen, bringing widespread hunger, disease, and violence. Shuja wants to meet a prominent Yemeni judoka, Ali Khusrov. We've come a long way, and now we're about to meet Ali Khusrov. I'm super excited to see him in person. He's my weight class, and he should be about my size. It's super crowded here because it's the day before the holiday, Eid al-Adha. First things first, we have to meet each other. I also have to undo my hair because it's not proper here to have a ponytail. So now the lion's mane is back. And here's my cane. Let's go. 
علي يا علي ايفنت على السلامه هو لو ويعني من علي erlebt Ich glaube man nicht das Talking to Ali, you have no sense that there's been war in this country for five years. He's such a positive person. I felt like we'd known each other forever. As soon as we met, it was so familiar. Right away, he was a friend. The two new friends only have a few days to organize their mini Olympics. They need to round up some people and find a venue. Right now, sports in a worse condition than ever. The war has completely destroyed our infrastructure. Young people are struggling to survive, so nobody thinks about sport. It's the last thing on their minds. For Al Hassan, the decisive phase is beginning. The first qualifying meets are coming up. His training sessions are getting more intense. Strength training is a really important part of our overall training. Because of the constant load towards the front, my upper body gets very strained. In strength training, I try to strengthen the back muscles while also staying agile, and also the side muscles and the rotators. In other words, all the muscles that stabilize me when I'm in a racing wheelchair. To make all that happen, I need to train hard. There's a reason why people say champions are made in the off-season. Training is very, very important for me in achieving my goals. Competing at a high level would be impossible without the support of his employer. The 34-year-old works as a diversity ambassador at the Federal Employment Agency. Hi. 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 You have to understand that this isn't football or some sport where you can earn loads of money. It's a sport on the margins. I'm a disabled athlete, so it's obviously important to have a professional background and some security. Aside from that, it's always been clear to me that I want to do something with my head as well as sport. I want to progress professionally and achieve things in my work. Al Hassan's job involves regular contact with management. So you go to agencies and other public buildings to show people the ways in which disabled access is still lacking. Like if a mirror is too high, for example, then things will change. Exactly. That's how it is from my perspective. Of course, I can say something when I see a lack of access, but a colleague who's visually impaired or hearing impaired has other needs and requirements. That's why it's really important to have a broad approach. So lots of people have the opportunity to share those things. Thanks, Mr. Balde, and all the best for Tokyo. I hope you do really well, and we'll see you afterwards. Thanks for your time, Mr. Terzenbach. I'll take your good wishes with me. Fingers crossed. From our 100,000 colleagues. That's cool. Thanks very much. Things are tough for Shuja and Ali. They have to do a lot of the organizing in secret. In the end, though, they manage to find a venue for their event. The sport 
könnte in diesem Land schon eine sehr gute Perspektive sein, weil Sport could give people in this country a healthy sense of perspective. People here have a kind of energy, and it would be good to direct it towards something constructive. But war is always destructive. When people get wrapped up in it, it destroys their lives. At least for today, the war seems distant. Everyone is focused on the event, including Ali, who blindfolds himself for an exhibition match with Shuja. For me, it's about showing that you can always keep fighting, no matter what. Right now, we're fighting against the war, and we're doing it without weapons. Ali Khusrov and I both symbolize the gentle way, which is the literal meaning of the word judo. The one place I still notice the sporting spirit is in the hearts of people who aren't giving up. They say, it's a terrible situation, but we want to live, we want to do something. Now and then that joy always flares up. That's the spirit of sport for me. We're breaking out of our shackles through sport. We made it to a country that's incredibly hard to reach. I hope it's the beginning of something. Hassan has very few memories of his childhood in Guinea. He hasn't been there for more than 17 years. I have my siblings Ibrahim and Indira here in Germany, and siblings in Guinea too. We all move as one, they support me all the way. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for my family and their support. That's why it's one of the most important and fundamental parts of my life. Al-Hassan's family in Guinea still live in the small town where he was born. Difficult living conditions forced his parents to give him up when he was just five years old there simply wasn't enough medical care in the West African country. Al-Hassan and his mother barely survived his birth. It was very exhausting. During the pregnancy, we didn't know it was going to be twins, because at the time we didn't have ultrasound. So we didn't know it was going to be two children. It wasn't until the delivery that the midwife noticed. The doctor wasn't aware of the child's position and just started pulling Al-Hassan out by his feet. That was very risky. That's when the trouble started. At birth, Al-Hassan's right leg was broken and his spine damaged. He had to stay in the hospital for several weeks. When I visited, the doctor didn't know that I was the father. 
and he said that they had messed up delivering the little one. Then he looked at me and saw my reaction and realized that he had said too much. To his parents' shock, Al Hassan was paralyzed from the eighth vertebra down. Some people even told us to watch out because there was a rumor that the old regime wanted to wreck the lives of children with disabilities and even kill them. But there's no evidence that was true. Al Hassan's paralysis ended up separating him from his parents and brother. There were now almost 5,000 kilometers between the two twins. I often wondered how his life was there, how he was doing. What was it like when his adoptive parents weren't with him, at school, for example? How was he treated there? Did people understand his disability? I would have liked to be with him so I could defend him and help him. I missed that a lot. I hope one day I can make that up to him. The family keeps in regular contact. C'était la vraie euh, décision de vous, de me laisser à Düsseldorf. Et apparemment, ça t'a ça, ça, ça permis de, de vivre une vie pleine, pleine de, de joie, de bons moments. Parle-nous de tes copines maintenant. Ça, c'est un sujet qu'on n'a pas abordé là. <rire> ça, on parle pas de ça. <rire> Four weeks later, Shuja is back in Germany. The Yemen trip has left its mark on him. It was both physically and mentally tiring. I think it was the right idea. It was absolutely the right moment. But I'm not under any illusions that the world will be all rainbows tomorrow because we went there and shot some video. Um, it was my entry point, the first small step. But it was such a positive one, and one so full of hope. I know it was right. That's the goal. I won't accomplish much on my own. I need everyone's support. Shuja seeks out his old Kung Fu master in Wiesbaden. Here, his training primarily focuses on mental strength. He wants to be able to summon that because his campaign towards a first Paralympics is far from over. Physically, I've lost a huge amount of weight in what's actually a Paralympic year. I weigh less now than I have in eight years. 
But that's not so bad, because I can now bring more mental strength to my performance. Four weeks later, preparation for Paralympic qualifying competitions enters the decisive phase, with training taking place at the Olympic Center. There's life, and then there's judo. But right now, judo is my life. We'll see what comes afterwards. Maybe someday my life will be a bit different. But right now, I'm in the right place. <laughs> He's reached top physical condition again. But the trip to Yemen and the coronavirus pandemic have had a psychological impact. Still, training gives him support and structure in these uncertain times, as well as a clear goal. Also the Paralympics, uh, the Paralympics helped me work on myself so much. It all depends on how I look at things. Going there isn't stressful. For me, it's pure fulfillment. This is my life's dream. By late summer, things are finally becoming more concrete for Al Hassan. In Switzerland, he takes part in his first race in almost two years. This is really something special. To have that uncertainty about how you're going to do and how everyone else is going to do and what you can bring to your performance, that's what makes racing unique. You can't simulate it in training. It's what I love about this sport, the sense of possibility, the adrenaline before the starting gun goes off, the sense of togetherness. That's what makes it special. His coach, Alois Gemeina, is always by his side. The two have been working together for about 10 years. Alois and I could not be different Alois is naturally someone who is very straightforward. Alois and I couldn't be more different. He's very straightforward, very disciplined, very orderly, and very exacting too. That's not always the case with me. So I benefit a lot from the fact that we're very friendly with each other. It's not just a coach-athlete relationship. To a certain extent, we've also become friends over time. The fact that we've gotten close and adapted to each other despite being so different has led us to develop into the people we are today. But on the track, everything comes down to him alone. Today, he's aiming to qualify for his fourth Paralympics. Though Al Hassan doesn't win, his time is fast enough to send him to Tokyo. With qualifying about to begin, Shuja is facing challenges. The trip to Yemen and the pandemic have been a bigger strain than he wanted to admit. His coaches are worried. They don't want to let him compete without a psychological evaluation. But Shuja doesn't want to take the required tests, so his nomination is withdrawn. Those around him say the concern for his mental health is too great. This was for me, um, I think, a lot more than than then. That hurt much more than not being allowed to fight in the next tournament. I felt really abandoned because a lot of people didn't want to stand by me anymore. It wasn't long before my national team coach was back in Hannover. 
Kampfs auch für das folgende Turnier nicht. She said I couldn't compete in the following tournament. And she wasn't nominating me for Tokyo either. Das war für mich einfach so. Moment mal. Was? Was? You just can't do that. That's destroying a dream that's been building up for decades. Ja. Jahrzehnte gewachsenen Traum so. Not reaching the Paralympics plunges Shuja into crisis. He isolates himself and for the time being doesn't go near a judo mat. The sport has shaped half his life and has always given him support and structure. Right now, he doesn't want anything to do with it. He gets support from his friends, but it takes time for him to recover. It's still hard to believe that it happened. It's like, wait, can that really have been it? After decades of training and work, to just be told that you can't do it anymore? I felt like saying to my life, wait a minute, if you're taking this away from me now, you must have something better to offer in return. What are you offering me? Because I've been through enough pain. Do you have something else to give me now? In that sense, I'm waiting to see what's coming. It's now two weeks after the Paralympics. In Tokyo, Al Hassan competed in his last professional races. I've been on the way with great expectations. I definitely went there with high expectations. I really wanted to use this last Paralympics to make it to the finals again, and even make it to the podium. I trained super hard and fought super hard for it. But basically, it was already clear during the year that it was going to be very difficult. With his dream of a Paralympics medal unfulfilled, Al Hassan is ending a career of more than 20 years in competitive sport. I've had loads of great experiences throughout the years of competitive sport. I've met lots of cool people. I've also learned a lot about myself and watched myself grow. It's been incredibly fun to be in competitive situations again and again. I'm made for competition. When I look back, this was an eventful period of my life. A new phase of his life is beginning. Sport will still be a part of it, but now other things are in the foreground. This winter I plan to fly over to Guinea and finally see my family again. And I'm also especially keen to see how the country and the people have changed. I'm looking forward to that. Nearly two months after the Paralympics that Shuja had to sit out, the 24-year-old is back on the mat. It's the second day of competition in the Judo Bundesliga, the national league for sighted athletes. The coach of Rüsselsheim called me and said, hey, are you available for the Bundesliga? I was euphoric and then a little panicked. I thought, the National League? It would be my debut after such a long break and such a personal low. I didn't know if I could do it, but at the same time, it was clear to me that I would. And now, I'm proud to be part of this team. What I expect of myself here, in my debut, is to put up a great fight and win. And at the same time, it's good for me to learn to understand that I've already won by being part of this competitive national league.
Shuja competes for Jotze Rüsselsheim. He's the only para-athlete on the team. But the visually impaired judoka doesn't want special status. I have a problem with the status of being designated a blind athlete. I just want to be taken as seriously as any other opponent. The time has come. Shuja's first fight of the day. Just weeks after being devastated about the Paralympics, he's fighting again, unexpectedly, and on a very big stage. The international elite fight here, and they're even cited athletes. If I lose, there's no shame. Even still, I can get really and completely beaten down and down on myself. Then I think, what am I doing here? But no. The right reaction is to say, if it affects me so much, then it's probably a fundamental part of me. And to take the defeat seriously. But understand that although I may have lost a fight, I'm still a strong person. I'm still a fighter. And in life, if you come out of those things stronger, then you win. Not only is Shuja back on the judo mat, but his Yemen peace project is also moving forward. His fight has only just begun.